This is Tang So Do, also known as Korean Karate, the same style that Chuck Norris practiced. And now, it's my turn. <laughs> Training starts with warming up. And I'm already confused. Because every command is in Korean instead of Japanese. I'm trying my best to not freak out. After warming up, it's time for line drills. Consisting of kicks and punches and blocks up and down the dojo. But I'm having a hard time with the Korean commands. Luckily, the movements are almost identical to Japanese karate. And I've done that my whole life. But then, everything changes. As you compress the landing, use that to launch you into the next. <laughs> This is where the Korean influence really shines through. Because when Japan occupied Korea in 1910, they suppressed the Korean martial arts. As a result, many techniques had to be secretly practiced. That's why you won't see this in a Japanese karate class. Next we're gonna shift to Idan Apchagi. Tang Soo Do has two variations of each jump kick. First one, going for height, tuck and front kick. Control your arms. Uh, so second style is not to go high, it's to cover distance. When I want to go high, I drive that knee up. Takes my whole body up, brings the hips to this level, shoots the kick out. This time, the knee is going to drive forward, covering distance with your kick, not height. So now, yeah. two more inches. All right. Find how far away you can be. Yeah. All right, so that's a bow to uh -huh. the Yeah. So in sparring, I cover the distance yeah. on kick. Amazing. So Tung Sudo likes to be in the air. There's different ways. Yeah. Jump kick doesn't mean I have to be this high. Right. Jump kick means I'm not touching the ground. I never even thought about that. Yeah, it's interesting. That's why you're Jesse. <laughs> you come and you learn. <laughs> We're going to shift gears into crescent kicks, spin crescent kicks, and jump spinning crescent kicks. When you do your crescent kick, it is super important to come through this cross position. Once your leg is in the cross position, the hips open up, the leg extends. So the power is coming from the core. Very good. Now you're going to see the importance of what I call the fold position. When you do spinning crescent kick, you spin. Here's the fold. Watch the back leg fold all the way through. Without the fold, your balance and your posture are all out of whack. You're going to spend more time falling over than you are kicking. Keep your head up. Don't look down. Look at the part of your space. And you turn. Look here. Posture is yeah. paramount. Changes everything. When the posture is wrong, yeah. the technique falls apart. Yeah. So the basis of all stance is mm. good posture. Mm. Wow. Take it into the air. You cannot jump if your posture is like this. Make sure that fold in the leg is in there. Make sure your other leg tucks. I see. Okay. The more it tucks, the faster you spin. Yeah! Very good. Yep. If you're enjoying this video as much as I enjoy this water, hit subscribe. <laughs> Next up, it's time for kata. And much to my surprise, the forms are almost exactly like in Japanese karate. This explains why they call it Tang So Do because it literally translates to Chinese hand. The exact same term the old masters used in Okinawa, the birthplace of karate. You don't necessarily have to breathe with every move. Sometimes that makes you breathe too much. And just like Japanese karate, Tang So Do teaches the applications of the kata. This is how the movements can be used against an aggressive attacker in self-defense. 
And although many techniques look like punches, strikes and blocks, they can actually be used as joint locks and takedowns. Back fist. Back fist. There's the form. Yeah, these last moves. Interesting. But like any effective fighting system, Tang Sudo also has elbows and knees. Bam! And take down goes here. Yes. Thank you very much. Tang Su. After two hours of training, I want to know more. What is the philosophy of Tang Su Do? It's to develop individuals who can contribute to society. There's self-defense in there, of course, but really it's about developing the one person. What would you say is the difference between Japanese karate and Tang Su Do? Possibly the fact that we kick a little more, maybe a little higher. Maybe 60-40 on kicks. Yeah instead of maybe 40, 60 on kicks. Mm. Of course, the knife hand, where right. the Japanese will be going this way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Whereas in Tang Sudo, we'll go from the hip, if it's mm. middle or high. Okay. Or we'll go from the ear, sort of, and then down if it's a low chop. And so, you know what? That reminds me, I've seen the exact same in Okinawa. Mm. They, they hide the arms behind the body, right. and then they come up and here. And then they come up. Yes, yeah. I just realized that. And, yeah. and application-wise, mm. so if you're grabbing me, or you're looking to grab me, yeah, okay. this would be the block, Yeah. that would be the attack, possibly. Mm. Obviously both. But in this case, if you're, for example, grabbing me this way. I'm, I grab you. Okay. Either way, yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. So I can go. That could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hmm. you know, it doesn't mean it's, it doesn't necessarily have, it ends out the same way, but maybe the application is different. That's the block. Oh. So it could be that way. Okay. Or if you go for me again, yeah. this would be pull down. <laughs> nice. How would you then compare Taekwondo to Tang Soo Do? Um, obviously both have Korean foundation. Yeah. Uh, Korea has a long history of, of martial arts. Lots of kicking, a lot of kicking games that they've had historically yeah. in, in Korea, which is probably why the kicking is still there and mm. Taekwondo has brought that out. Um, but we are, I would say Tang Sudo is, is still the, the more traditional in the sense that we're still using the old Chinese form, Taekwondo. Flourished, of course, as we know, and it's everywhere. Tang Sudo is, is big, but it's not as big. But then it didn't have the support from the Korean government. And so, what is the connection between Chuck Norris and Tang Sudo? Right, it's his <laughs> style. That's what he was taught by our founding ma grandmaster, uh, Grandmaster Jay Shul Shin, at the Air Force Base in Korea. And he was a student of Wan Ki. He came to the United States to establish Wan Ki's organization in the U.S. And then that eventually developed, and, and it became his own organization, mm. uh, which is the World Tang Sudo Association. Okay. So our founding grandmaster was Chuck Norris instructor. I'm proud to say I have the same instructor yeah. since Jaisho Shin was also my instructor. Yeah, that's, that's very cool. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to take part. Thank in your you class. very much. It's it an honor to have you here. Thank you so thank much. You much.